Hey, future badass business owner, welcome back to the Start a Small Business podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing your profit and loss income statement and how it is a powerful tool in your tool belt for making the most profit in your business. Okay, now we have been talking about how important it is for you to understand your business numbers from day one. Just because you're starting a new business, it doesn't give you a pass on diving into this from the very beginning. And I guarantee you that if you were to ask small business owners what they wish they would have paid attention to early on, it would have been this. The number one report that you need to understand is your profit and loss income statement. It is your business's report card. It's going to show you the flow of money through your business. Now, you might recall from a previous episode, I told you about the number one calculation you need to know. That was sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. Well, this formula not only shows you how to price your products and services the best way, but it also matches the flow of money through your business, which means it also matches your profit and loss statement. Now, I do have some videos that I'll link in the show notes that are over on the YouTube channel that will actually be better visual for you on this. So that way you can kind of watch those to really understand. But today, what we're going to do is we're going to just go over the concept of them and the categories. And so you can have a basic understanding of it. But I do recommend that you go to the YouTube channel to learn even more. What we want to do is take a look at the highlights of what you need to know and understand about your profit and loss. Now, when you first look at it, it just looks like a bunch of numbers thrown up on a page. Uh, My goal here is to help you understand what each of those lines and those sections are really trying to tell you. And eventually you're going to learn how to use the numbers on the page to understand the story of your business to give you a great opportunity for potential sales and profits, as well as how to use it for opportunities to reduce your costs and expenses. The best way that I can explain this to you is when you have a young child, you don't just hand them a book and tell them to start reading, okay? Because they're going to look at that book with awe and going, what is all this goobly gop that is sitting on this page? No, what we do is we teach them their ABCs and then we teach them how to take those letters and form words, C-A-T, cat. Then we teach them how to form a sentence, the cat in the hat. Then we teach them how to read the book, the cat in the hat. So really when it comes to your profit and loss, I think of it the same way. You already understand one, two, three, three, you also understand that if you put the one and the three together, you get 13. My goal now is to help you move to that next section, which is how to read the sentences and paragraphs of your business numbers, which is what your PNL is. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, let me step back for a second because I really want you to understand what a profit and loss statement is and how do you even get it? What you're supposed to be doing from the very beginning is using a bookkeeping system. Inside of this bookkeeping system is a report and it is called your profit and loss. It's going to take the information that you're keying into the bookkeeping system and And because if you're categorizing everything the right way, which you should be from the beginning, what's going to do is it's going to create this profit and loss. For example, if you have QuickBooks online, which I highly recommend to people, as you know, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the report section and then you're going to see profit and loss. You're going to print it up. Now, for some of you, you might not do a lot of sales. So you're kind of doing it in a spreadsheet or something like that. You can create your own profit and loss. I really recommend that you watch the videos because you're going to need to know where to put everything. But you can create your own profit and loss or whatever bookkeeping system that you're using. It will definitely show you pull that up for you as well. It really sounds complicated, but it's not as complicated as it sounds. The main thing is, is that when you key in your transactions or any bills or money that you take into the bookkeeping system, that you assign it to the proper category. So for example, you're going to decide the very first thing is the item that you're keying in. Is it income or is it sales? If it's income, you're going to put it into the income category, which you can break down by the way, or have a generic income category. Then you're going to decide if it's an expense. And then if it's an expense, you're going to determine what type of expense that it is. And as you start to do this in the future, it's going to put everything into the category that you assign it. And if you've done properly, you only have to assign it the first time and it should memorize it for the next few. Sounds complicated. Please know that it's not. It's just a matter of if you try to fix this years down the road, it can become complicated because of all the sales that you've done, which is why I really encourage people to do this from the very beginning. 
But like I said, you're going to have some expenses. You're going to determine, is this a cost of good or is this a general expense? Is it going to be into a subcategory called advertising insurance or rent or whatever the case may be? Those are the kinds of categories that you are going to be doing. The system a lot of times will have default categories that you can use in the very beginning. You don't have to try to recreate the wheel if you don't want to. You can use these basic categories, but I find that there's some tweaking that's needed. I would say 80% of it's good, but if you really want to understand the business owners better, you want to create some uh, additional subcategories and things that you can use. Uh, but we're not going to dive into all that. It's not teaching you how to do that. I'm just throwing some stuff out there for a while. Uh, but the main thing is once you do it the first time, it should remember it. Now, all your bills are going to come in and all of your income is going to come in. So remember our, our thing, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. So as you key in all of the income, all of that is going to go into the very first section, which is income. And it's going to show either as one line of income, or if you've taken the time to create a couple subcategories, you might have one line, for example, that says um, residential, and you might decide that the other one's going to be commercial. So you're going to put the sales into one of the two based off of who the client is. You can absolutely do something like that. Now, there are three main blocks of categories or sections on your PL, but there are five lines that actually are important total. So first off, what are the three blocks? We just talked about one, income. The second big block of information is going to be your cost of goods. Cost of goods are going to be, remember, anything that has to do with you creating or making or providing the service. So if you make bicycles, it would be the bicycle parts. If you put the bikes together, it's going to be the labor to help make the bicycles. If you are a maker of cakes, you're going to start a cake business. It's going to be all the materials and ingredients you use to make the cakes, as well as your labor in making the cakes. If you are a handyman, it's going to be the materials that you purchase for the project, as well as the labor for you to do it. If you have a nail salon, it's going to be any of the items or materials you use in the process of doing those nails, as well as the labor hours to provide the service. If you're a dog groomer, it's going to be any chemicals that you use on the dogs, as well as bandanas, as well as the labor hours to cut the dog's hair follow me along. Those are the cost of goods. Where your expenses now, that's different. That's a huge block and it's usually the biggest block on there because there's all these ticky tack things that we purchase and buy in our business for the operations of the business. You're, this is where you're going to have things like uh, advertising, insurance, rent. Uh, by the way, if you buy equipment or or uh, things that you do not give to the customer, it's an operational expense. Because if you have to buy scissors, for example, that's not the client's fault you have to buy scissors. You don't give them the scissors at the end of the project. So those are actually operational because you need them in the business. Hammers, stuff like that. Anything that you use, rakes, whatever. Those are operational expenses under the equipment line as well as repair and maintenance. I mean, I could go on and on about different fees and different things. Basically, anything else that is not used as you give it to the client. So what you give to the client, leave to the client, cost of goods, anything else that's used in running the business is going to be an operational expense in the business. Sometimes people will ask me about packaging. Uh, if you package something up and you give it to the packaging to the client, it is going to be cost of goods, just so that you know that as well. Uh, a lot of times, for example, if you have a restaurant, you're giving them a fork, a, you know, one of those little packets, whatever, those napkins, stuff like that. Those can be cost of goods because they actually get those items. Uh, they're not necessarily staying at the business. All right, now, something that you need to keep in mind is you're paying yourself. And I always telling people you wear two hats in the business. There's the employee you who's getting paid and then there's the business owner you that's getting paid off of the success of the business. By the way, under cost of goods is where you need to capture your time and labor for being an employee in the business if you are making the product and or you are providing the service. So for example, let's just say that you build decks, you're going to be paying for the wood, as well as the labor to build it. So what's going to happen is you're going to go out and you're going to pay for the lumber that's going to be into your cost of goods. But if it takes you five, six hours for you to do that deck, there needs to be labor hours and labor pay for you paying yourself a fair wage for being the laborer in the business. 
Because here's the thing, in the future, you plan to replace yourself or you might hire someone to replace you. It's very important that you have a clean cost of goods because either you're paying yourself or you're paying someone else that needs to be captured. Now, it might be one check that you write yourself or you might not necessarily pay yourself hourly, but you need to capture any money that you're paying you, the employee, in that line if you are somebody that is doing the actual work that is providing the service or making the product or service. You can have other owner's wages as just being an owner later on, but, and it could be one check, it doesn't really matter. That's more of a tax thing because you're gonna pay taxes no matter what on any money you take as a business owner, whether it's as an employee or as a business owner. And by the way, you're not gonna set yourself up on actual payroll, okay? You're just writing yourself a check from the company. Uh, a lot of times people will question if they have to set up actual payroll when it's just them. No, you do not do that. Um, but what we're trying to do is we're just trying to capture the money that is spent on labor properly. Hopefully that is not too confusing. Uh, I do explain it, like I said, in those videos a little bit more. But the main thing is you want to capture your true cost of goods the best that you can. And sometimes you personally can confuse it because you're not putting yourselves under there uh, like you should. The second part of labor that messes some people up is if you have an office person or someone that answers the phone, does more operational stuff, they're not under cost of goods. They're actually under operational expenses because they are a business operation. The business, it's a nice to have. It's not necessarily that you have to have them, but they're also not providing the product or creating the service. Therefore, they are not a cost of goods. I know this gets really confusing, but I promise you, the more you understand and learn and dive into your PNL, the more this all makes sense. So our big three categories, just to pull it back, is going to be the income coming in, the cost of goods, and the expenses, operational expenses of the business. Now you remember, I said there's five lines that are really important. The first line is your total income. So if you do have it broken down, your first line that you're looking at is going to be your total gross income. Sometimes they'll say revenue, income, stuff like that. It's going to be all the money coming into your business. The second line is going to be those cost of goods. So you're going to have another line that totals up all of the cost of goods, and it's going to tell you what that number is. Then there's going to be this little line in between that and the expenses. And that line's going to say gross margin. And the gross margin is going to be the difference between your sales and your cost of goods. So if you do $100 in sales and you have $50 in cost of goods, it's gonna say your gross margin is 50%. It just basically means that you've spent half the money and the other half is waiting to go to your expenses as well as hopefully some potential profit. Some people's cost of goods are really low at 20%, which means they have a gross margin of 80%. Some people's cost of goods are extremely high because of their type of business. It might be 70%, which means that they have 30% gross margin. It just depends upon the business. There is no right number, except for there's a number that's a range for the average business and definitely for your type of business. Because the more cost of goods that you have, the higher that number is going to be. So for example, if somebody's a roofer, they're going to have really high cost of goods because that's a lot of material to purchase that is part of that price of that. Whereas if somebody is doing a service or something that they're once and done, they might have low cost of goods because they really don't use a lot of materials and just have their labor hours uh, as part of that. So it's not as high as other businesses. Now, the fourth line is going to be your total operational expenses. That's going to take all of those expenses that you have, add them all up and then give you a total of what your operational expenses. And this one can be really tricky because there's a lot of times you'll have $50 here, $100 here, $1,000 here, $100, $50, $60, stuff like that. And when you get to the operational line, it's huge because all of that adds up. So it's really important that you're paying attention to the operational line because a lot of times that's taken away from your profit because every dollar you spend takes away from the profit because the fifth line is the one that you really want to see, which is your profit line. Sometimes it'll say net income where we had the gross margin, gross income up top. That was before your expenses. The net is your bottom line profitability of the business 
after you take away your cost of goods, after you take away your expenses. Now your profit one is the profit of the business. Now it sounds great, looks great, all that other stuff, but keep in mind your profit goes to three different things. It goes to your taxes, it's gonna go to retained earnings, which is money you put back into the business, as well as any owner's money that you're taking from the business out of those profits. So profits is a great number, you wanna have a great number, but just know that doesn't mean you get to keep all that money and put it in your pocket because you do have taxes to pay and you are going to have to put some of it back into the business and then you can take some. And if it's a negative number, it's called a profit and loss for a reason because sometimes it's going to be positive and occasionally, unfortunately, there are times when that number is going to be negative, which means you had to reach into your pocket in the business's pocket or retained earnings to pay the bills because you did not make enough money with enough profit in order to be have a profitable month. Uh, I was looking at one the other day. It's like every other month, one month they're profitable, the next month they're not, one month they are, then they're not. All they're doing is taking money and going back and forth. So if they were to take out all that money on the months that were positive, they'd be really hurting in the next month in order to be able to pay their bills because they constantly were having to rob themselves to do that. So your profit and loss is basically, like I said, it's money flowing in and out of your business. Money comes in through income, but money flows out through your cost of goods, flows out through all those operational expenses, gets to your profitability line. And then from there, some of it's going to flow out to taxes, some of it's going to flow out to back into the business, and some of it's going to flow to you. It's really important that your profit and loss is as clean as possible. The, the problem that happens to businesses down the line is they don't start off correctly on their profit and loss. And next thing you know, they're a year, two years into their business and they're trying to understand their business numbers and they have to go backwards to try to clean this mess up. So if you can start your profit and loss properly with the right booking keeping in the beginning, as well as doing your profit and loss, I promise you, your business is going to run 10 times better and you're gonna be a lot more profitable. Now to help you out, with all of these business numbers and all these things that I'm doing, I do have videos over on the YouTube channel that walk you through all these different business numbers and the profit and loss. And I also have the course, Know Your Business Numbers. And there is an entire section that is dedicated to understanding the PL and how it works and how to read it and to know what it's telling you. That will also be in the show notes to help you out. I can spend days and hours on profit and loss statements. It is so critical inside of your business. I really wanna make sure that you understand it please make sure that you really dive into understanding this piece of your business. It's going to be weird in the beginning because you don't have any of these numbers, but the more you can at least start to understand them. And then as you pick up business and do business and look at that uh, report on a monthly basis, you're going to find that it's, it's going to get cleaner and better every single time. It's just a wonderful tool in your tool belt to make sure that you are priced correctly. And speaking of pricing in our next episode, we're going to talk a little bit more about pricing and how your P&L can actually help you price better. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this episode up. Check out the show notes and I will talk to you on the next episode. Bye for now.